Today, we are going to learn about how to get message center data. Before we jump into fetching the data using Microsoft Graph API, we'll start by understanding what the message center is in M365 and why it's important. So what is message center in M365? The message center is a centralized communication hub within the Microsoft 365 admin center. It is designed to keep administrators informed about important updates, new features, plan changes, and service-related notifications from Microsoft. The Message Center helps IT professionals stay ahead of changes by providing detailed information and timelines regarding product updates. This centralized location ensures that all messages, from service advisories to security notifications, are easily accessible, which simplifies the management of a dynamic cloud environment. Now let's look into why are we using it. There are several reasons why organizations rely on the Message Center. Timely updates. The Message Center delivers real-time notifications and updates directly from Microsoft, ensuring that admins are promptly informed of any changes that might affect their services. Change management. With insights into upcoming features and modifications, IT teams can plan and prepare for updates, reducing the risk of disruptions. Enhanced security. Notifications about security updates and patches help maintain the integrity and protection of the Microsoft 365 environment. Centralized information by consolidating all critical communications in one place. Administrators can easily track the status of announcements, review historical messages, and stay organized. In essence, the Message Center acts as an early warning system and a planning tool for administrators to maintain an optimized and secure Microsoft 365 experience. Now, let's explore the steps to automate the entire process. But before that, it's essential to understand the purpose of this automation. The Microsoft 365 Message Center contains numerous messages across various services which can appear cluttered. This clutter increases the risk of missing important communications. To address this issue, we can build a report based on data retrieved via the Microsoft Graph API, allowing for better organization and visibility of these messages. In this session, I will guide you through the steps to pull data from the Message Center using the Microsoft Graph API. Let's begin by examining the steps involved. In the first step, we will do the application registration and credential setup in Azure Portal next. In the second step, we will configure API permissions so that script can read message center data next. In the third step, we will set up credentials securely. And in the final step, we will write a program to translate graph API data to Excel. Let's look into the steps detailing how to pull message center data using Microsoft Graph API and then store the results in an Excel file. Application registration and credential setup. First, you need to register an application in Azure Active Directory. This process involves logging into the Azure portal and creating a new app registration. Once registered, you'll be provided with an application ID and tenant ID. Additionally, you must generate a client secret, a secure key required for authenticating your requests to the Microsoft Graph API. These details form the backbone of your application's identity and will be used later to request access tokens. Configuring API permissions. After registering your application, the next step is to configure its permissions so that it can read message center data. Under API permissions, you'll add the necessary Microsoft Graph permissions for retrieving service messages, specifically targeting the read access for message center items. Since this type of data is sensitive and managed at the tenant level, you'll need to ensure that an administrator grants consent for these permissions. Setting up credentials. Securely with your application registered and permissions assigned, it's critical to store the tenant ID, client ID, and client secret securely. While developing or testing, you might keep these details in a configuration file, but in a production scenario, consider using secure mechanisms such as Azure Key Vault, to protect these credentials from unauthorized access. Now let's jump into the Visual Studio code to write script to translate Graph API data into the Excel. We are into the Visual Studio code, and here we will first create a config file. 
where we will keep client ID, client secret, and tenant ID. So let's do it quickly. Go back to Azure portal and go to overview. And from here, we will grab client ID and tenant ID. And for client secret, we will generate one by going into the certificates and secrets tab. Once you are inside, let's create one and copy it and paste to config. And all these details we will put into the config file which we have created. Now let's start writing the code. We're starting by defining the parameters for our script. We're setting up three parameters. Days back. We're assigning it a default value of 7 so that the script is looking back 7 days by default. All. We're including a switch so that if it's activated, the script will fetch all available messages instead of applying a date filter. Export path. We're setting the default output path to service messages.xlsx, where the Excel file will be saved. Next, we're defining our functions. The first function, ensure module, is taking a module name as input. Here's what we're doing. We're checking if the module is available on the system using get module dash list available. If the module isn't found, we're printing a message that we're installing the module. We're then attempting to install the module with install module. If the installation fails, we're outputting an error message and stopping the script. The second function, get config, is responsible for reading and validating the configuration file. We're checking if config.json exists in the current directory. If it's not found, we're informing the user and exiting the script. If the file exists, we're reading its contents and converting them from JSON. We're also ensuring that essential fields like client ID, tenant ID, and client secret are present. Any errors during reading or missing fields are handled by outputting error messages and terminating the script. Now we're entering the main script area. We're ensuring the required modules, Microsoft Graph, and Import Excel are installed by calling our ensure module function for each. We're then reading the configuration from config.json by calling getconfig and outputting a message indicating that the configuration is being read. We're converting the client secret to a secure string for security. We're using convert to secure string to change the plain text client secret into a secure format. We're creating a credential object using the client ID and the converted secure client secret. If this conversion fails, we're catching the error, displaying a message, and exiting the script. Following that, we're connecting to Microsoft Graph. We're using the connect my graph command with our tenant ID and the secure credentials. We're catching any errors that occurred during the connection and providing helpful error messages. Next, we're initializing variables for pagination. We're creating an empty array dollar all messages to store all the messages we fetch. We're setting the dollar base URI to the Microsoft Graph endpoint for service announcement messages and assigning it to dollar URI. We're applying a date filter if the all switch isn't active. We're calculating the date that is seven days back or however many days specified by days back using get date. We're formatting this date in ISO 8601 format with a trailing Z to indicate UTC and appending it to the base URI as a filter. We're outputting a message showing which filter we're using. Now we're fetching service messages with pagination support. We're entering a do while loop where we're fetching data from the current URI using invoke migraph request. Each time we're checking if the response contains any messages. If it does, we're adding them to our dollar all messages array and outputting how many messages were fetched. We're then checking if there's a next link at Odata next link in the response for further pagination and updating URI accordingly. If any errors occur during data fetching, we're catching them, outputting an error message and exiting the script. After fetching all messages, we're exporting the data to Excel. We're checking if there are any messages in all messages. We're flattening complex properties for easier readability. For instance, we're joining the tags array into a comma-separated string if it exists. We're similarly flattening the services array. We're converting the details array of objects into a one-line JSON string. 
we're also splitting the body property into separate fields for content type and content. We're then exporting the data using the export Excel command, setting parameters like worksheet name, auto sizing, table style, and freezing the top row. If the export is successful, we're printing a success message. Otherwise, we're outputting an error message. Finally, we're disconnecting from Microsoft Graph by calling disconnect mgraph and ensuring that we're not showing any errors. Now let's execute the code. After execution, you will notice that it has generated this Excel file called servicemessages.xlsx. Now let's open it and you will find that it has all the message center data. This is so powerful, you can create now any form of reports on this data. So friends, that's it for this session. If you like videos on managing M365 administration programmatically, please subscribe to the channel. I will come with more real-time examples. On this note, I am stopping over here. See you in the next session. In